All right, Shalom Israel, Shalom Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Mashaku Malaki Washai. That is to say, Yahweh, be named the Heavenly Father, who the world will call God, and Yahweh Shai, be named His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is Brother Kasadi from WFI Jersey, Philly, and we're touching on the video, or the title of the video today is Did You Cut Off Your Hand Today? Right? Did you wake up this morning? Right? Did you, um, did you, did you cut your hand off? Did you take your eye out? Did you take your leg off? What did you do today to sur surrender and submit yourself to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? All right, let's kick it over the book of St. Matthew. Because the Lord speaks of this. The Lord speaks of man having to do this each and every day, right? This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 29. It says, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So the Lord says, it's better if your right eye offends you, you got to pluck it out. You got to cast it away from you. You got to remove that eye or that arm or that hand or foot that's offending you and causing you to error in your ways. Now, was the Lord physically talking about actually perform surgery on yourself? actually go in the mirror and say, I mean, this is what the Lord said in Matthew, the fifth chapter in Matthew, the 18th chapter that I got to go. I got to go take this out or take this off. The Lord's not talking about getting a butcher's knife that you would use to chop up some steak or some lamb and put it in a skillet or and, and, and then put some seasoning on it. So whatever seasons you like to throw on there with some herbs on top and you serve it on the side of some Alfredo pasta. The Lord's not talking about doing that. The Lord is saying that you have to spiritually remove anything that's hindering you from serving the Most High God. Whether that be finances, whether that be family members, whether that be the friends of the world, whether that be your job, whether it be your hobbies and your activities you like to do, whatever it is. It's, it's a million things that can distract you from serving the Father in the, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world is call Jesus Christ. So there's plenty of things that can distract you, plenty of things that could be that right eye, plenty of things that could be that hand or that foot, but you have to remove those things, right? Reading on, verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into fire. So it's better that you go in this kingdom, most I willing, maimed, uh, 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 mutilated, you understand? Better than for you to walk in with all your members. Actually, for you not to walk in at all with all your members. Meaning, you keep the things, the problems, the, the different offenses that's hindering you from serving the Most High and really being ten toes down. And you continue on with your ways and what you was doing. And you didn't purify yourself. You didn't cast off that old man. You didn't mortify your members. Like the scriptures say in Colossians the third chapter. Then it's going to it's going to stop you from getting the kingdom. Why would you let anything stop you from getting a kingdom? Every day we should examine ourselves. The Lord said, let's get this real quick. Right in 1 Corinthians. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. And I want verse, it's like it. Give me one second. Let me, um, I think I want, I want 2 Corinthians, it's like it. Right? This is the book of 2 Corinthians. Right? Chapter 13, it's like it. And I want verse 5. It says, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. So every day you got to examine yourself. Am I really in this thing? What am I doing? What did I do yesterday? Can I go harder the following day? What can I do today to show the most side that I love him? To show the most side that I really believe in this thing? How can I show and, and be a light to these Gentiles? How can I further magnify the name of the most side? What's hindering me? What's stopping me? Did I work more hours this week than I put in? I mean, you even got to think about that. Every week, weekend and week out, you work 40 plus hours. For those that have a job, you work 40 plus hours. If you have that full time, you know, uh, uh, schedule, 40 plus hours. How many hours in a week are you putting in to serve the most high? Right. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. 
Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is in you, except you be reprobates? So you you should know whether if the Lord is in you and you know, Most High is putting His Holy Spirit upon you based off of the actions you're bringing forth, right? You can tell a tree that's bringing forth righteous fruit or a tree that's bringing forth wicked fruit. You can see it, right? The Lord said, man shall be known by his fruit, paraphrasing. So with that being said, you got to, or it's like the tree shall be known by his fruit. But, but the point of the matter is we would know how a man, whatever way that man is moving and operating, you could tell if he's still in his truth or not. If he's still in the faith, if the Holy Spirit is still upon him, you understand? So when you start to see your works are not adding up to what a tree that's righteous should be bringing forth, you got to literally pause. Take it. Take a second. Step back. Examine yourself. And you should do this every day. Examine yourself and see what's going on. Right. You got to perform a, 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 a diagnosis, so to speak. Right. The most High is commanding us to do that in these last days. Things that's offending us, things that's hindering us, things that's stopping us from further magnifying the Lord, you want to cut it off and remove it. And like I mentioned earlier, that could be friends, that could be family, that could be your woman, that could be children that want to be wicked and rebel and, and complaining because they want to celebrate their birthday or celebrate Christmas. And you give in to that. That's your right eye or your hand or your foot offending you. And the Lord said you want to cast that away. Now, let's go back. Let me get another precept. Let's go to the book of St. Matthew. All right. St. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19. Because really, really what it's going to come down to is what are you willing to sacrifice to serve the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shai? What are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up working at these high-end jobs that's causing you to work on the Shabbat? Are you willing to give up your free time and your your so-called uh, hobbies you like to do, but it's you only got time for work, and then you got you know you got this free time, but you use this free time instead of serving the Lord, you go do your own thing. What are you willing to give up to to be a part of this thing? We in the last that we in the end of the end. The Lord is not. If you don't want to be in this thing, then don't be in this thing. The Lord is not holding your hand. He's not causing you to want to serve him or not. It's is really. I mean, at the end of the day, we know we're pre-programmed to do so. The Lord has certain spirits that will serve him no matter what. But on a low level for you to understand, you can choose to serve the Lord or you can choose to serve the world. This is a Matthew chapter 19 and verse 12. It says, for there are some eunuchs which are which were like it, which were so born from their mother's womb. Right. There's men who were eunuchs, meaning what? They were born without their members, man, man's member not properly working, right? Or or not even being there at all, right? Which is a a terrible thing. But you know the Lord Lord does that to certain man. It says, and there are some eunuchs which are made eunuchs of men. There's others who may have had that um their secret parts removed or or damn destroyed in a fight or um, some type of battle, right? Reading on. It says, and any you know, they can't reproduce or even, you know, lay down with that woman. But continue on. It says, and there are, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. So there are certain men who they have their physical members working, but they spiritually mutilate themselves to be able to make it to the kingdom of heaven, most I will. Meaning they sacrifice the things of this world. Whether it's women, chiefly this is talking about women, but on another level, this is going into a man, because it's a parable. A man who's willing to give it up, give everything up to serve the most high. The most high called you in this truth. If you're watching this video, you're not just gonna scroll by. This channel isn't a channel for just all of the earth's population. This is for those that's the most high is calling in this thing. You understand? The Lord allowed you to come across this video. Most likely you're already in the truth or, or just searching out. And you came across this. Maybe you saw that flyer and it had the cold cuts channel on there. But nevertheless, the Lord brought you in this thing. Now that you win this thing, you got to question yourself and examine yourself. What are you willing to give up to continue to serve the Most High? 
right? Are you willing to go back in the world? Do you want to go back in the world? What was in the world for you? Is that more precious than the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is unfathomable. Everything you, everything that's in the world, you can already see. And there's men that's been in this truth for 30 plus years who've, who've literally been in the world already and saw all the things that it has in the world, but now they spent the rest of their life in this truth, right? We was in the world, 18 years, 19 years in the world. Then the Lord brings us in the truth. There's nothing in the world for us. There's no turning back now. They put it plainly in the, the, the Matrix movie. You got the blue pill, you got the red pill. Blue pill, you go back in the world. Red pill, you serve the most high. But what do you want to choose? So read norm. It says, and there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So if you got ears to hear, then you'll pick up what the Lord put down, right? Are you willing to serve the most high to get this kingdom? Are you willing to sacrifice certain things and, and stop, you know, spending time and pleasures on things that it don't profit you? Don't matter. And, and for men who want a woman and want a wife, it may be that the Lord doesn't want to give you that because he wants you to further serve him and push towards his kingdom. You understand? Because um, that's what the one of the folds is going into on his, on his uh, breakdown is that there's certain men who just, it just shouldn't be in your lot really to be worrying about a woman. As well, because now what you, you some of your time, the time that the time that you did have, you got to pretty much split that in half. Damn near. Now you got to spend extra time for your woman and you have children, you got to spend time with the children, so on and so forth. It may be better if you was living a life with Paul and Yahweh, of course, who didn't have wives in the life that they lived. Right. When you read in the New Testament, they didn't have those wives. Right. Paul literally forgo foregone all of that just to serve the most high. And sincerity and in truth. Thinking that it's better to be in the kingdom than to worry about those things right now in his life. And for those that have wives, I'm not, you know, not saying, oh, try to leave your woman because you want to serve the most high. You can't do that. But you want to examine yourself and make sure you put in that time that you do, if you do have a wife and children, make sure you take in that time that you do have with them. And you kind of, you're definitely putting the most high first. I'm not saying don't spend no time at all with your family because that's not wise. You have to build up your household. Those things are commanded. That's commandments as well. But you want to put the most high first and foremost. And you want to make sure that your whole household is serving the most high first and foremost. So continuing on, let's go to Romans chapter 6. So we want to make sure that we, um, we continue to check ourselves and understand what time we're in right now. It's not the time to be worrying about the things of this world. It's not the time to be worrying about investing in your 401k plan. It's not the time for that. Any given second, all hell going to break loose. And if, you, if you've been subscribed to this channel, then you know that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6. And, and we're not trying to put this channel up as if it's just a thing. But we specifically, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yashai, all praises to the Most High, go into prophecies, breakdowns on the end times in the coming day of Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So we want to crucify. Our old man was crucified with the Lord. Meaning what? When you come in this truth and you acknowledge that the Lord uh, uh, died for you. Right? Yahweh Shai died for you so that you now can have life. So you can repent and serve him in these last days and keep these commandments. As Israelites, as God's chosen people, then you got to realize that the ways that you was living... That's done. That's as dead as being crucified. That's gone. Right? And you can't go get back on the cross again. As far as, um, or it's like you can't put Yahweh Shai back on the cross again. He already, he died once. He's not dying again for the nation of Israel. So if you are sincere about this thing, then you got to examine every time that you do go off, it's as if you're putting the Lord back on the cross, which is off. He's going through that torture and torment all over again. Just for rebellious and stiff-necked people. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. And we want to destroy the body of sin. This body is programmed to sin and go off against our maker. We want to put this body far away from us. We want to hope and desire in the Lord and serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Because this flesh by nature won't serve the most high. 
is literally created not to. This is a natural body. The body we search and seek for is a spiritual body. One that's going to serve the Lord no matter what. Read on. Knowing this that our, our, it's like, yeah. Knowing this that our, our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should serve, it's like we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So we want to serve the most high and be free from this sin. Meaning what? Not be under the punishments. Really not be subject to committing this sin that like we willfully do. You may have an evil thought pop in your mind. That's sin. The Lord said in the book of Proverbs, the 24th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get it real quick. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 24. And I believe it's verse nine. It says the thought of foolishness is sin and a scorner is abomination to men. So the Lord say even the thought of foolishness is sin. Those thoughts you have of folly, that's sin. We got to repent every day. We got to crucify our members and mortify this body each and every day. The Lord said we got to die daily. You understand? Meaning every day you wake up, you got to examine yourself, mortify yourself and keep going harder. Be a new man each and every day. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind by the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right? So let's get another precept. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Just the book of Romans. Chapter 8. And verse 13. Romans 8 and 13. Therefore, brethren. I saw that 12. I saw that 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Right, so the Lord, the Most High, he raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead, right? Now, if we believe, we also can be risen as well. First spiritually, and then physically, if we have to go through martyrdom and die as well. Read on. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. So if you live after the flesh, the Lord said the wages of sin is death, right? Therefore, to be carnally minded is sin, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, right? Romans 8 and 5 on down. So the point of the matter is, so like you, and I get you, right? And that's spiritual. But um, the Lord is saying, right? If you want to live after this flesh and live after the things that this flesh loves to live after, which is this earth, natural things, carnal things, things that excite you, things that get that adrenaline flowing, those things, that's not what the Most High is looking for. He wants men to serve him in his spirit and in truth, submitting themselves to him each and every day, serving him, reverencing him, worshiping him. You got to worship the Most High, right? You got to forget yourself and think about the Most High. It's not about you. It's all about magnifying Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Read on. It says, but if you if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So if you mortify, meaning cut off the things you do in the body, how do you do that? By repenting, asking the Lord for forgiveness, by fasting, right? Making sure those spirits don't continue to you, you continue to entertain them or continue to be entwined with them. By um, by reading, right? Knowing what you can do and can't do. Knowing how to move and the examples of our forefathers and what they showed us, right? By studying, right? Keeping those things in your mind and going over and recycling them and reciting them and, and teaching them. You understand? These are ways to remove these different deeds that your body does. Giving alms. The Lord said alm uh, delivered from death. And it covers a multitude of sins. So giving alms back to your, to your nation, right? Whether those that's within or without, meaning in Israel that know they Israel or outside, meaning don't know the Israel, but are Israelites nevertheless, the Gentiles, right? So-called man that might be on the street saying he's a black man. He's a 5%. Showing them what's going on and maybe they may be homeless or whatever the case may be. In righteousness, you want to kind of, you know, use a sermon and give alms back to your nation. Right. Whether it's food drive or you want to give out um, shirts, you know, you want to help out um, those that may be on the streets. They don't have a spot to, you know, be at 
thing, things of that nature. You know, there's different ways that you can dig deep and, and think about how to, how to help out your nation and with various different ways. Maybe you continue to give alms within, meaning it may be um, sisters, you may be making garments. Maybe you start making some garments for free for brothers that go out on the highways and byways and teach. Maybe you come out to camp and you, you know, you're passing out waters or you're passing out drinks. And you just sit and hear the words of the Most High. It's different ways to give alms and, and you know, give back to the nation. Whatever you can. You don't have to put that. You don't have to get brothers a damn jet so they can fly across the whole United States or the whole world just to teach the word. You know, that's that's not what that's not what, what the Most High is looking for. But continuing on. It says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you want to be adopted and brought back to the Most High as a son of God. Adopted meaning brought back. So that's what we want to be able to do in these last days. And the only way you can truly do that, Salakia, is by what? Mortifying your deeds, mortifying your members, coming back to the Lord and serving him in spirit and in truth. Let's get a couple more precepts on this. Now, I mentioned uh, as well. Actually, let me get this real quick. All right, let me go to Galatians 2. This is Galatians chapter 2, <clears throat> and I want verse 20. <clears throat> it says, I am crucified with a Mashiach. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but a Mashiach liveth in me. So when we're we're in this truth right now, the Lord doesn't have us in the truth to live out our best life, to do all the things we want to do while we was in the world. We're in this truth to magnify the Most High in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. That's why you're in the truth. That's what it means to be in the truth. Meaning the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is now in you. You're now woken to know the, the true role you're living on the earth is to, to serve the Most High, to keep his commandments. And, and, and that's it. And to believe, of course. You're not in this truth to make it big in a society. But like I said, go do all the things you wanted to do and live out your best days. You're here to understand that we need to magnify the Most High. Out of all the billions of people on this earth, the Lord has chosen a select group of people to serve him, to magnify him, and to keep his commandments. So read it on. It says, yet not I, but a Mashiach liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of Yahweh, for if righteousness come by the law, then a Mashiach is dead in vain. So the point of the matter is, the Lord um, has died for us. Yahweh Shai had given up himself for us so that we now can have life. So with this life we have, it's only to magnify the Most High. You understand? So I was mentioning as well that you got to separate yourself as well from these friends and these family that's in the world that's hindering you and pulling you out from serving the Lord. You understand? Sisters, you may have a husband who just don't want you to serve the Most High no more. Maybe he's a Muslim. Maybe he was a Muslim already or a, a Christian, a diehard Christian, whatever the case may be. And now the Lord has brought you in his truth. Well, yeah, you still want to use wisdom as far as still being a wife in the household um, still, you know, honoring your husband. But if he's causing you to do things that's contrary to what the Bible is saying, then you want to examine that situation, right? You want to, you know, do what you can around a household, but you, you don't want to let nothing, anyone, stop you from serving the Most High, right? If he's trying to get you to eat pork, smoke a cigarette, smoke some weed with him, don't do those things. Do abominable acts. Look, we not, you know, you serve the Most High. And brothers, maybe you have a woman who's trying to get you to celebrate her birthday and now you're worrying about getting different, whatever. And I don't want to go too much into it, but you understand, you want to, anything that's serving the most, it's like if hinder you from serving the most high, you want to remove that far away from you. Let's get some precepts on that. So this is 1 Peter chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, for as much then as a Mashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. So the Lord said, if, you, if you're suffering from the flesh or in the flesh, then you will cease from sin. 
ways we can suffer from the flesh or in the flesh is by mortifying these deeds. Fasting, right? Fasting, getting these spirits removed from you. Call on the name of the Most High, withholding yourself from eating and drinking for a minimum of 24 hours and just, just calling out to the Lord and praying and reading on the different things you was doing and repenting, asking for forgiveness. Maybe you want to fast for wisdom. Maybe you want to fast for other things, but this is one of the ways that you can magnify the Most High and mortify those deeds. Verse two, that he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. And while you living in this earth, you don't want to live as man in the earth lives. You want to live to the will of the Most High, doing what the Father commands us. You understand? Read on, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. In a time past, that's what we did. I was I was in college. I was in the world, obviously. You know, I, I wasn't born just directly into the truth and, you know, three months old, four months old, five months old. That wasn't my lot. You know, but nevertheless, the Most High has called me and brought me in as he has for you and everyone else is watching this. And what you want to do is now that we're in this thing, we don't want to live in a way the Gentiles no more. We can't. There's no turning back. You turn back now, you're not going to come back. Either you win this thing or you out this thing. Reading on. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, Access of wine, revelance, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. That's what we did. Smoking weed, then eating shrimp, crab, and lobster, eating that abomination. Some people may smoke cigarettes, black and miles, whatever the case may be. Fornicating, going off, parties every weekend, freaking off. But guess what? We're now out of that. We're now out of that. So reading on, verse 4. We're in. They think it's strange that ye run not with them to the same access of riot. And your friends and your family, they may be like, what's, what's going on with you? You kind of changing. You changing now. Now you're not, now you're not eating this shrimp. What's wrong with you? Now you're not smoking this weed. I mean, we always smoke weed. Why you don't want to smoke weed no more? Didn't God make weed? They'll say that. They'll say that. Say, didn't God make weed? Didn't the Lord create this shrimp? Then they'll try to they'll try to get on you. Look, I don't know. I think you're going off. I think you're going against God's creation. No, hold on. The Lord doesn't want us to do those things. The Lord called us out of that. See, if they knew better, then they would do better. But the Lord doesn't want them to know better. The Lord wants you to know better. And now that you know better, you got to do better. And those that offend against the Most High, you want to separate yourself from them. So reading on, it says, we're in, they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same access of right, speaking evil of you. They'll begin to speak evil of you. You may, you may be living with your parents and then they're murmuring and gossiping and maybe you living in a basement or your room, you come downstairs and they literally whispering and talking and you get in the room and now they quiet. I mean, they were speaking, they're probably speaking evil of you, backbiting. I don't know, why is he always just in that room just burning incense? What is going on? He's acting weird. Why? It like, seems like he's in a cult. What, what is he into? Why is he always reading? Why is there always videos being played? Well, why is he always listening to somebody else uh, scream on a microphone? What is going on? Well, hold on. Why, why is he always going out there and holding posts? And, and well, they might not say might not say holding post, but they may say, why is he always out there standing for damn hours every uh, Saturday? What is he doing? Doesn't he not know that it's Saturday, uh, Sabbath is Sunday? They may say those different things, speaking evil of you. Read it on. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? So the point of the matter is, you want to separate yourself from these people that's doing those things. Speaking evil of you, trying to cause you to go back in the world, trying to damn tap your shoulder and pass his, his damn blunt to you and then you start scratching your neck no don't don't do that don't even put yourself in that situation look no i don't do that i, I serve the most high and you're supposed to serve the most high as well you cannot smoke weed you cannot eat this pork you can't eat this shrimp crab or lobster no sac uh, celebrating birthdays celebrating these damn um quote unquote uh holidays you understand no breaking the shabbat these are basic laws 
right? So we want to come back to the Most High. And one of the ways you do so, by when you do come back to the Most High and keep these commandments, you want to separate yourself from those that's in the world as well that can rub against your spirit and cause you to go off and be in the flesh like they're in the flesh. There's demons all around you. The Lord will send a demon in the image of your, of your mother or, or your brother or whoever, your friends. Literally, the Lord sends spirits on them to cause you to get sifted out the truth. I've seen it. So we want to be cautious of that in these last days. Why should anything separate you from the love of the Father? Do you love the Father or do you love man? Is it more important to serve your woman or to serve the Most High? Are your children more important than the Most High and the Son? Or are you going to serve the Most High and the Son above anything else? Let's get another preset. Let's go to Sarah. Ecclesiasticus, out the Apocrypha, chapter 27 and verse 12. And it reads, if thou be among the indiscreet, the indiscreet is your friends of the world, your family. If you're amongst them, it says, observe the time. So you don't want to be there for much long. Maybe you're there, you're in and out. Maybe you got to see your family real quick, whatever. Go in there, go see him, whatever. And you get up out of there. You spend hours there. Now you're going to start to reminisce. They're, they're going to bring those times up. Man, remember we used to do this? Remember we used to do that? Look, listen. The Lord said, observe the time. You went there, now they damn, they seducing you. Playing on your mind. You understand? Whining and dining you. Getting you to reminisce and go back into the... There's a song called Reminisce. And he's going through all the different things he went through. And I forget who made the song, but it's an old 90s song. He's going on and on. You don't want to reminisce and think about that. The Lord said, observe that time. You start to reminisce and then you back in the world. You reminisce and it's a while lie, a dead blunt is in your hand. Why lie? Damn, reminiscing. No reminiscing. What are you reminiscing about? It says, if thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. So you want to always be if you are going to be with anyone, you want to be amongst those that's in the truth. When you're amongst those that's in the truth, it's a different feeling. They're in the same mind as you. They was previously in the world, so they know, look, we're we not going to think about those things. We're going to worry about what's serving the most high. You can still have that same joy and fun as, as far as um, just having fun, but in righteousness. Maybe you like to go bowling. Well, it's, it's brothers in uh, Little Rock, WFI Little Rock, that's mighty at bowling. I mean, mighty. Not the not the glorified brothers, but all praise and most high. We had a great time in the Little Rock uh, groundbreaking. <clears throat> You're not saying that brothers in uh, Jersey Philly isn't, you know, up there either. But I was I was out there by myself. But nevertheless, you know, nevertheless, um, you you can still have that same fun and same uh, joy. Being amongst brothers and his truth, it don't gotta be extremely serious every single day you're around them. That's that's not that's not what this truth is about neither. It's a time and season for everything. Right? We have good times and things of that nature and whatever. But you wanna be able to be amongst those, whether it's sister, you're amongst sisters that's in this truth, you're amongst brothers that's in this truth. You wanna or sisters among sisters, I'll put it like that. Not saying brothers is amongst sisters, because that's going off. And I'm not saying sisters just amongst all men. That's going off too. But the point of the matter is, you want to be amongst those that's in this truth more than you're amongst those that's in the world. Because what's going to happen? They say birds of the feather flock together. Meaning you're amongst those that's gangbanging. <laughs> I mean, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to say, look, take this. Now you're walking around wearing blue or red with a flag out your pocket. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Let's get another precept. This is the book of Syrac, chapter 37, in verse 12. But be, it's like it, but be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. So you want to be amongst those that serve the Most High? So... If you go off, they'll be there for you to uplift you and 
sorrow with you and go through those uh, those times of fasting or praying and exhorting you to pick you back up. You can't do that if you amongst those that's in the world. I say you went off. They're not going to understand what that means. Ah, you just smoked a blunt. God forgives. I mean, yeah, but that don't mean just willfully go smoke a blunt or go smoke that cigarette or go pop that woman that was hitting your phone. Don't do those things, man. You understand? But if you was amongst those that's in the truth, they're going to get on you. I know I'll get on you. I know I want somebody to get on me. I love that. Right? Because that shows love. Shows a brother actually cares. You understand? But those that's in the world, they don't care about you. They want you to be in sin because they're in sin. They want you to be like them. They stay there without them saying it. They're saying, look, if I'm going down, you're going down with me. And that's how that Jake got that ride or die spirit. You with me or what? You saw that movie, uh, Boys in the Hood. Uh, uh, Ricky just got killed. Trey went back home, tried to grab the strap. His dad took the strap from him. So then he goes, creeps out the window, hops in a car with Doughboy and Monster and damn, forget the other brother's name in the movie. Now he riding and then uh, uh, Trey's thinking about it. He's like, hold on. Said, what the hell am I doing? I'm about to go off. I'm about to go murder. Look, yo, Doe, let me out. Then Doe kind of look. He kept driving like, you with me now, nigga? You understand? So he's still driving. Then he had to say again, Doe, let me out. Then he, you know, he kind of pulled over, got him out. And then they went, them three went to go do what they did. Then they died. So don't be like that. Actually, I'm going to get this precept. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 10. Proverbs 1 and 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So the Lord said, if sinners, those that's in the world, they entice you to be amongst them again. The Lord said, don't consent. Consent meaning agree with. You down for it. You'll ride or die. Don't be a ride or die with those that's in the world. Because guess what? You're going to die. The most High going to kill you. Just as he's going to kill them, he's going to kill you too. The Lord said, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. It's not an if, it's not an and, it's not a maybe, a myth, whatever. Whether you like it, understand it, believe it or not, that will happen. So go ahead and continue being with your friends of the world. The Most High going to kill you too. But if you want to serve the Most High, you know what you got to do next. I'm actually close it out with this precept right here. Right? So I can see what it is what I want. Yeah, come on, let me get this real quick. Oh, I'm going to get two more there. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. The Lord said don't have, that's a commandment. Went into the video yesterday about the, the, um, the Lord gave the spirit to the apostles to also uh, pretty much give commandments to Israel, right? So nevertheless, the Lord said, I'll read again, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You can't get down with that. You want to reprove and rebuke them and, 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 and move swiftly. You let that spirit linger around, and guess what? You're going to be with them. So I'm going to end it off with this. This St. Matthew chapter 16, and I believe I want verse 24. No, that's not what I want. I want to say Matthew chapter 16 and 26. Oh, I'm, I'm in 15. That's why. St. Matthew chapter 15, 16, it's like you, and verse 24. It says, Then say Yahweh shy unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So if you want to serve the Lord, you got to deny yourself. Meaning what? You got to get rid of um, your own self. The old you, whatever you like to do, but it's causing too much time to not be spent towards the Lord. You got to allocate your time and serve the Most High, right? You got to put the Most High first, right? And then everything else falls underneath. It says, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whatsoever will save his life, it's like for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his, it's like it will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So the Lord said, whoever saves his life, you'll lose it. You trying to worry about the things of this world, you're going to lose your life chasing after it. 
But if you lose your life, meaning you forget the things you was doing and the deeds or whatever the case may be, you put that behind you, then the Lord said you'll, you'll save it, meaning you'll be delivered. You'll be a part of the kingdom of heaven, most I willing. Right? Well, well, yeah, you'll be a part of the kingdom of heaven. That's the promise that's given to those that forsake their life and take up the cross and follow the Lord. It says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So what profit is it if you gain the world and the things of this world? But in doing so, you traded your life away for that. Maybe you got, maybe you was able to get a few million dollars if you was able to do that. Okay, cool. What does that mean when a market about to crash, when nuclear war is about to happen, when Yahweh Shah is about to return and burn up the sky or burn up the earth? What is that going to mean? All of that is going to perish. What does that mean if you got yourself 17 wives? Whatever. What, what does that mean if it's done in, in un, unrighteousness? What does it mean if you found your, you know, you got the dream job you always wanted and you went to school and you got all the degrees they got out there? What's that going to profit you? If in the process of time, you gain the world, but you lost your soul. Read it on. It says, or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? I mean, that should be nothing you should give in exchange for your soul. Because your soul is not yours to begin with. At the end of the day, all spirits go back to the most high. So it's either you're going to get down with the Lord and mortify and cut off your right hand. Or you're going to, you're going to uh, lay down and be destroyed and then perish and be uh, burned up. I mean, what do you want? I mean, that's a very easy answer. And Lord willing, you chose the uh, the uh, former and rather than the latter. Meaning what? Most high willing, you chose to serve the most high, keep his commandments in sincerity and in truth over being burnt up and perishing because you wanted to worry about your friends, worry about the world, and worry about the things of the society in this life that's hindering you and holding you back from serving Yahweh Bashem Yashai and magnifying his name. Most High willing you was edified. Lord willing you stay 10 toes down for the Lord in these last days. You watch it for these prophecies. It's been about five straight blood moons in a row. And it's been a, a, a lot of things going on on the earth. We getting closer and closer to the end. Most High willing you stay 10 toes down. You lock in. You fast. You repent. And you stay in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yashai. With that, Kwame Shalom.